Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone welcome back to the NPTEL online course on structure form and architecture the synergy. Uh, today we are at lecture number 13 which is basically uh, we will be talking about basic structural arrangement. So, in our previous lectures uh, what we have seen different kind of forces that uh, is acting on a building components and uh, on applied force how they are reacting like compression or tension or torsion or bending. So, uh, on that basis in this particular lecture, we will be discussing about uh, some basic arrangement of structural elements. So, before we start this uh, lecture, let us again quickly recap uh, what we have covered in just uh, the previous lecture that is talking about different structural property. So, we uh, know that if some object uh, is placed like that and when we just put pressure in this direction. So, you know the particle they will come close to each other and that is uh, basically the compression. Okay, and if you pull that uh, particular same object, so then uh, those you know particles they will try to go away from each other and that will form the tension and whenever it will try to bend. So, basically that will be a combination of both. So, on applied load on this, so it will try to bend like this and then basically in this upper portion it is compression and the lower portion it is tension for this kind of you know sagging moment. But that is just the reverse if we have uh, like a cantilever something like this and then we apply load on that. So, it will try to bend like this. So, in that case the lower portion we have compression and the upper portion will develop tension. So, these are very basic uh, you know forces and accordingly like how our structural element will behave that are very much fundamentals to know about the structural arrangement. So, with this uh, you know basic concept of compression, tension and bending will follow up different kind of structural arrangement and basically the structural element. So, in this case uh, like here I have given two example, one is just very common in our day to day life we uh, use it that is a table uh, and the other one is a great example of Parthenon from Greek, uh, but there are similarities and I know all of you can find the similarity is basically in this case also there are some pairs. Uh, or we can compare it to the like column of a building and then we have a you know uh, slab over it. So, this may be made of wood or compressed wood or MDA board uh, like for furniture and whereas, in the building the material like we change it to concrete steel or brick work depending on uh, you know the span depending on other calculation that we have studied that in order to get the requirements um, the structural requirements that we have to go through the you know assessment of load and then finally, we calculate all probable impact on that. So, in this case again it is a series of column put one after another and it is holding a beam on that. So, the structural arrangement is pretty similar. In this case, we may use some carpentry joints. Sometimes, in some cases, we just use adhesive to just you know uh, club two elements together when you make like uh, the model for our architectural design or we create any handmade thing. Then uh, either we go with the joint or else we use some adhesive to fix them up. But overall, the concept of this arrangement will remain same there will be two major components one is basically uh, you know the support and the other one is basically the element that will be supported. So, in this case we will have two major component 
one is supporting structure, the other is supported structure. So, again I repeat one is your supporting and one is your supported. So, supporting structure means which will essentially uh, carry the load and will support and the supported means which actually transfer the load to the supporting structure. I make it very simple in this case if we consider this table top. So, this is basically being supported by these four supporting members. In this case all these column they are supporting members and this overall like whatever we put up on it uh, like which will transfer those basically I refer to the slab. And this particular support will definitely affect all the design. So, that is why we should also know the kind of support that we have to give to make our structure stable. Now, in this case I have uh, you know given two different pictures side by side and I just want you to guess uh, like what could be the reason to put this. Okay, so, maybe you can find it out very easily where it is something a very low, low height structure and made of brick masonry. You cannot see any such concrete column or something like that fully made of brick. So, this is one kind of support you can get and the scale has changed. Now, this is a multi story building where uh, as of now under construction building it is only showing the beam and column and the slab. So, you can see this thing uh, like as a column then the beam and then the slab. So, depending on our design, depending on the span, depending on the load that will be imposed on it will determine like the size of the structure, material of the structure as well as the kind of support to be given to the structure. Now, in this case again if you see this uh, the structural support, there are different way we can fix it up. One is of the roller type. So, roller type support we can see in this that one end of the structure will be resting on a roller and normally uh, this structure being used for a bridge. So, that you know during this particular you know uh, movement the oscillation that can roll over it and it can transfer. So, in this case what is going to happen in degree of freedom for roller horizontal movement is free because it can go this side or you know this side on that, but vertical movement is not uh, like free it is fixed, but the rotation definitely in that case it may happen with this particular point it may rotate. So, when we go for a pin jointed uh, you know structure then in that case both your uh, you know horizontal and vertical uh, movement will be fixed up, but the rotation still on with uh, you know you know combining these two can do that. But when you go for a rigid frame, so then all this movement will be fixed. So, sometimes based on the requirement based on the load calculation and the purpose to erect the building we will select up uh, this structure. Now, in this case in order to make it more clear to you uh, this is example of a bridge at the one support you can see this is a roller type support a joint in one end where this is the other one this is your pin joint and here it is fixed to the wall and neither of the pin or roller it is basically the rigid joint. So, depending on that also we will have the arrangement. So, in uh, the previous slide and this slide our main intention to understand the type of support that we can develop and what are the you know flexibilities in that. So, depending on where we do not want uh, my structure should move uh, either horizontal or vertical or even there will be no rotation. So, we will go for a rigid type of support. Now, come to the basic structural element and which are very important because uh, once we know the elements then we will think about their 
organization their arrangement. So, some of the elements will basically uh, take the vertical load, some of the element will take the you know horizontal load or the lateral load. So, these are very important. So, in this slide if you see these are very, very, very basic elements of a building. Now, I, here I am not talking about any material to be specific, but as per their you know conventional uh, existence and their purpose. So, we can see uh, basic four type of elements in a building. So, we start with the wall, then slab and then beam and then column. So, in this uh, you know schematic model uh, just I want to show each of them. So, basically I represent this as wall with a brick, but this wall can be made of any other material as well. It may be uh, like concrete block or some you know composite block uh, you know wall or maybe it may wooden wall. So, depending on the position normally wall is uh, like in short it is a slab which is you know upstanding. So, if you have a slab like this with a thickness and you just make it stand on its edge, so it will become wall. Now, come to the next is the slab that you can see this is uh, basically the slab. Okay. So, uh, this is your wall and beam is basically uh, it is in connection normally for the frame structure and all uh, we make it as a frame with a vertical and horizontal arrangement. So, uh, this portion where it is actually carrying the load uh, of the slab and transfer it to the column it is basically the beam and whenever we go for this kind of frame structure with column and beam the purpose of making this wall is not to carry the load essentially. Okay. So, whereas in case of a load bearing wall, uh, load bearing structure, so all load will be transferred to the um, through uh, your uh, you know wall. So, that will come uh, with some example, but in this case this is your beam and the next one is the column and you can identify it easily that uh, this is the column. Now, this again I am saying these are very basic elements and we will just try to know the concept and different kind of arrangement which are very basic in nature, but in um, you know nowadays in the modern building uh, those arrangement basic component may be same, but the arrangement the material and the way uh, we execute it will have some um, difference and um, we also can name those things in a different manner, but basic uh, arrangement that we will uh, learn through this particular lecture will have a relation strong relation from the ancient age to the modern age and it will be clear once we discuss that. So, basic four elements wall slab beam and column. So, again slab is basically responsible to uh, you know uh, deal with the horizontal force and then beam is again a horizontal and also vertical both and then column is basically vertical and wall is again a vertical. So, now when we are talking about load, so what exactly this load transfer? So, whenever we uh, create any structure, so we have uh, learned this thing there is there will be some self weight of the material referred to date load and there will be some you know a uh, movable object like we human being furnitures that will uh, be the life load. So, again along with that there are some other load. So, all loads will be applied to the structure either horizontal in nature or it is gravitational. So, it may act like this or it may be just uh, like wind load a lateral force to it. Now, when this load will be implied to that it will transfer the load to the uh, you know associated member to it. So, if it is on the slab, so say for example, in this I am standing on this slab and I am you know carrying some I put some weight on that. So, this will be transferred to the beam 
then beam will transfer to the column and column will go uh, again and again and then finally, it will transfer load to the foundation and foundation is supported again with um, you know the soil. Now, finally, we transmit all the load to the soil and then whatever the reaction will have and then we have uh, learned about the static uh, equilibrium. So, by which we can maintain the equilibrium and our building will stand stable. Now, again I am uh, as we know the component with combination and permutation, uh, we can say about three basic uh, structural arrangement start with the wall slab where uh, there is no role of column and specially it refer to your uh, traditional load bearing wall and uh, still we invented those uh, you know um, the concrete and the you know concept of the frame structure and other thing. So, most of the buildings in history we have uh, seen that uh, it is basically the wall slab uh, kind of structure which is load bearing again. The next category into it is your post lintel or post beam. So, post refer to column. Normally, you know we heard this term like light post, goal post. So, basically this is a vertical member and then when it is lintel, so this is again a horizontal member. So, these are post and this is lintel and then we name it alternatively this is post beam structural arrangement. So, again in history also we have seen this kind of thing even in the Parthenon it is post lintel type uh, kind of structure. Then post slab is something different where there is no role of the lintel. So, directly we support the slab with post or the column. Now, this joint is very uh, interesting. Now, how can it be? So, we will show you some of the example like where there is no such lintel or band is directly supported. So, on top of some support we just put it. So, now if we go back to this example, this furniture example. So, here if we consider that okay, this is the thickness of the table top. So, here we can see that uh, it is uh, being constructed with this uh, particular uh, portion of say the material the table top and it is been just being supported. And now, the connection it may be a joint, it may be a carpentry joint or it may be fixed with some nail or it may be fixed with some adhesive that is a different way of attaching it, but basically these three type of arrangement is there. Now, come to the wall slab uh, structural system again this is a very representative uh, you know structure and uh, this is just for showing you the purpose that here you cannot you, you are not able to find out any you know uh, column or something like that is full wall and uh, for the load bearing uh, kind of structure uh, definitely the thickness of the wall at the corner or wherever we go for uh, you know some kind of you know um, connection. So, we can change the thickness of that accordingly and on top of it we put the slab. Now, this slab it may be of concrete it may be in earlier days we use some you know uh, wooden batten uh, and then sometimes I section and on top of it we just create the slab. Now, in this case what exactly happening the wall acts as a vertical load bearing member. So, whatever the load imposed on this, uh, so that will be distributed depending on the arrangement that I will come to that uh, discussion. So, it will transfer load to the wall and wall will transfer load to the foundation. So, here it is the live load, dead load and additionally plus all other kind of load that is applicable for this building or structure where it will be built, then it will basically go through the slab, then the wall, then foundation and then soil. This is the hierarchy. Now, this is one example where you can see that uh, there is no such column and you can see this is just uh, like a you know. Um, brick pillar, but most of the cases is just uh, resting on this particular portion, this uh, slab on wall. So, this is one composition. Now, 
The arrangement of wall is very crucial because when you go for load bearing structure, we will have some restriction on the span selection uh, or else we have to create our structure uh, like the thickness of the wall so huge. So, sometimes it may be a very regular form structure where like basically you create it is in symmetry. So, all this wall you know uh, like with little bit punctures somewhere and all for the window opening and all. So, we create it, but uh, again for the load bearing wall the proportion of the opening should not be uh, like really high because then uh, that probable uh, load that it could carry will be hampered. So, this is one obstruction, but this is somewhat which is uh, more easy to build up this load bearing, but sometimes it may be something like you have uh, the longer side the wall thickness which are essentially carrying the load and then may be there are some internal partition okay, to create some interior space which are not load bearing. So, whatever the slab will be resting on it. So, basically that will be on these two walls. So, looking at the span we have to design accordingly this particular thing and again uh, that has some restriction because when you go for this load bearing uh, structure. So, heavy mass will be imposed to that and there is restriction on height as well. So, uh, there are study where uh, we have seen that it may go with proper treatment, but normally we cannot go for a high rise building because then uh, this function this arrangement will not really work again all imposed loads to it. And now the next example is a very famous you know creation and it is the example from India the uh, Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad again it is a uh, load bearing structure where uh, the you know use of this exposed brick wall and all is very beautifully placed. So, come back to this again uh, the basic idea uh, to make this kind of arrangement is not to go for really you know some inferior kind of structure where it will have some limitation, but this is just the arrangement. Now, if you transfer this thing we just change this uh, particular wall like from brick to something else and then we improve uh, this uh, you know strength and the rigidity of this material then this height restriction can be waved off and then we can go for a higher side. Now, come to the next type of uh, the arrangement where already uh, we discussed about the Parthenon which is a post lintel or post beam kind of structural arrangement. So, two component one is the post or the column which act as a vertical uh, load bearing member and the other one the lintel or beam uh, is basically your uh, act as a horizontal load bearing member. So, what exactly here it is going on? So, this slab is now become supported structure and supported by beam first. So, wherever load suppose again I put uh, the load uh, some furniture and other thing here. So, it will transfer the load uh, okay, and distribute based on the arrangement based on the design how we fix it. Say for example, if uh, this is just a square gate. So, uh, the load will be distributed like this. So, uh, it will be equally distributed if it is homogeneous material and all the construction remains same, but if it is something like rectangular then again it will have some distribution like this. So, this portion will go like this go like this. So, load will be transferred to the beam and then what will happen here. So, beam will transfer load to the column and column will transfer load to foundation. So, that is the overall uh, you know transfer of the load and here the role of this brick work is basically to create the division, create the privacy and you know protect your building from outside environment. So, essentially it will not act as a structural member and that is why with this structure we can really reduce the thickness of the wall considerably. So, normally for earlier structure for the brick work we may have like 1 meter thick 3 feet thick uh, you know wall uh, for old public buildings and some buildings of uh, you know earlier time. 
But now we can reduce it even we can go with the 125 mm thick, uh, uh, 5 inch thick, 10 inch thick uh, brick work for the external and the for internal even we can reduce further. And as well as the you know advantage of this particular arrangement that you can even keep this particular thing open like the you know proportion of opening will be more the chances will uh, be more to you know give proper opening and this particular thing can be filled up with some glass or something some steel member uh, glass material so that we can also uh, enjoy the environment even we are inside we can uh, see through those glasses. So, this is one advantage of this particular structure, but again we have to remember that arrangement the spacing of the beam it may be regular of a simple building or it may be little bit you know uh, uh, what we call asymmetrical that we can have a building like this where uh, the shape is something like that it is not in absolute grid. So, then in that case we will uh, like go for some kind of other arrangement. So, here you can see two examples where uh, this is very clear uh, that um, we cannot see any wall on it and still it is uh, stable and still under construction and this is a finished building. So, this particular wall is just giving uh, some protection some privacy for the interior space and this you know uh, particular opening created at the top is giving light or ventilation inside, but basically overall it is uh, the post lintel structure. So, these are example of the modern buildings where we follow it with traditional concrete as a material RCC like reinforced uh, cement conc concrete uh, is acting as a material, but again uh, we should not really uh, you know restrict ourselves to understand that okay, this type of arrangement are only is possible with this concrete. So, again I am saying that material is uh, something where it will be decided based on the purpose based on the load and uh, the requirement and other parameters based on the cost also, but overall arrangement here is basically the post lintel or you know uh, what we call uh, in this case uh, the post beam structure. Now, come to the third category in this case as I mentioned uh, there will be no lintel on something uh, like this particular band. So, here uh, it is a multiple column placing here and on just top of it this is being placed and in this case all these uh, columns that we place here that will take the vertical uh, load or vertical load bearing member where its slab is basically the horizontal one. It will again transfer the load and it will transfer load to the post and column and then foundation through soil. So, this is the arrangement, but in this case this particular joint uh, we can have different option. So, first option that we can go very simple one that this is your slab and this is your uh, column ok, very simple type. The second type we can have some drops, so that it will give a sense like ok, uh, this is a created, so uh, it will help. The other one it may be we can create some capital on top of it, so it will hold like this and then it may be a combination of all these like we have a drops and then the capital and the column. So, the arrangement will do. So, normally this kind of structure we see as a like shelter uh, temporary shelter some bus uh, you know shelter bus depot terminal. So, this kind of structure being implemented and this is not uh, really uh, something which will have uh, you know inferior quality, but if you see this building is a great creation where you can easily identify with this image that there is no such beam. So, slab is resting just on top of this circular column or post. So, post slab is another kind of arrangement and if you change it like you change it to the steel and then the other one may be some steel or this you change it to wood. So, material again may differ depending on the requirement or the purpose, but overall this arrangement is also possible. So, that is all for this particular lecture, uh, it was brief, but then also we got to know some of the basic arrangement. So, we started with wall slab 
and then we have your post lintel, then we have post slab and I have shown you some of the you know uh, images like um, some construction images randomly picked up some of the existing buildings some good architecture examples and then I also want you to also make this list uh, exhaustive you search uh, such buildings where this can be uh, this is already being implied it may be from some historic building it may be in the recent time buildings and all. Now, uh, someone may ask me that uh, okay, wh whatever these forms are being created, so what about when we have this kind of you know structure, some, some structure like this, so where this kind of um, arrangement like whether it is nothing followed uh, the three of the criteria, yes, in that case we will go by the form and it is formed even or you know form active uh, structure or form driven creation where you know uh, there will be not a specific structural arrangement there is a series of structures they are you know acting uh, or they are arranging in a such a manner that that can create this particular shape or the shell structure or maybe some other pneumatic structures. So, in uh, coming lectures we will be covering that these are again the same study material. So, with that uh, I conclude here and the next lecture that we will cover up that is also interesting that is basically different structural forms how it developed the relation with uh, the internal force that it uh, you know act with and how these shapes can also affect the efficiency of the selection of that particular structural shape. So, um, with that I again thank you to take part in this particular course, thank you.